okay, Omer, this is my second pilgrimage to the Holy Land, and but I've never been to this place. It's amazing. It's kind of off the beaten path. Exactly where am I? I know this is Belfort uh, mm -hmm. Castle. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this place. Well, Belfort Castle, it's off the beaten track, but Belvoir Castle, you know, sometimes we need, we need to stop for a minute and say that Israel is the Holy Land, but there were 2,000 years after Jesus in our time. Okay. So around the 12th century AD, was a movement by the name Crusaders. It was a huge shift of movement of Christian, Catholic Christian from Europe in order to take the Holy Land from the hands of the Saracens. This castle that you see, Belvoir, it's a prototype of most of the Western uh, castles that we see today in Europe. The blueprints of this castle were given the inspiration for the blueprints of the Tower of London. This is one of the biggest castles ever been built purely designed just for war, and the beautiful thing about it, never been conquered. Never? Never been conquered. There was a year and a half of siege here of 18,000 Muslims. Led by Saladin? Saladin, exactly. Okay. Against 400 foot soldiers and 50 officers. So you have 450 soldiers against 18,000 Muslims for a year and a half and they couldn't take it. Okay, so tell me about the structure of the castle. I mean, why was it that he was unable to penetrate this castle or the fortress? This fortress is actually a, a it's, it's kind of kind of like a layer. It's a layer of fortresses. You have an, an outer layer and then you have, you have the castle, then you have an inner layer, which is the keep, and you have another keep. So this castle is built to the point that if someone will conquer the outer perimeter, you can still go and besiege yourself to the inner perimeter. Funny thing is, this is the doctrine of the Crusades, and it's been used in the state of Israel today, the same thing. You have the immediate force to block the first attack, and if that, the line of defense has been broken, you have a keep to stay in there until reinforcement will arrive. Okay, so what about, it overlooks the Jordan Valley, yeah. is that correct? And we kind of just kept going around and around to get up to this point. Mm -hmm. um, would that have been the route, that's the, that's the, the way of the kings? that you were telling me about, would that have been the route also that Jesus traveled? Absolutely. When okay. Jesus traveled from Nazareth, which is right behind us, okay. we're gonna head out from the castle, you'll see Nazareth, and you see the Mount of Transfiguration. The roads in the ancient times used to go, follow along ravines when you have water. So this is the exact same route that Jesus took when he went down to, uh, uh, to Jerusalem. Jesus used one of the flanks of the Via Rex, the road of the king. It's the same road that the Crusader used, it's the same road that the Ottoman use. It's the same road that you use today to drive to Jerusalem. That's Highway 90 in Israel. <laughs> it's exactly the same one. Okay, so how is it that they were not able to, say, for instance, penetrate the water supply? It, I mean, you saw, you, you were kind of showing us mm -hmm. around. Tell me about, you know, some of the intricate details of that. This castle has, just this castle, has seven secret passages. Seven. That you're not, you, you won't be able to see them even till today. You have two water cisterns which are completely disattached from each other and in time of peace you have a spring outside the city wall that will bring water into the castle. So in time of siege you close down the castle then the aqueduct is off but you have a huge water cistern to the, to the entire castle. If that outer perimeter will be taken by the Muslim you have another cistern just for this keep. So actually in every given moment you have more water inside the castle than outside the castle. Now you, you spoke of the Crusaders and uh, pilgrims would come. At one point the Crusaders would protect the pilgrims mm -hmm. making pilgrimage to the Holy Land. And as I said, this is my second pilgrimage. You're the director of the Midwest uh, region for Israel Ministry of Tourism. Kind of connect the dots for me. I mean, why is it so important for us to continue to travel to the Holy Land and to take in some of the sites? We're connected even though I'm way over in the United States. Oh, absolutely. You know, this is, this, is, this is an amazing point that you bring out. The Order of the Crusade that built this castle, the name was Hospitalarian. Mm -hmm. We all know what hospital is and hospitality that comes from there. They vowed to take care of the pilgrims who comes over to see the holy sites and to be connected with their faith. It's kind of like what Israel is doing today. It's very, very, very similar. We are not Catholic knights, but we share the same ideas of, you know, given access to the holy, holy places. It's exactly the same thing. Well, indeed, we feel connected. I know I do, and I look forward to many more pilgrimages um, to Israel.